Once upon a time, there was a little girl in Shreveport, Louisiana, standing under a big, beautiful tree, playing church with her sister and their baby dolls. At the same time, there was a little boy who had just moved on the same street, riding his bike in the neighborhood. That little girl was me, and that little boy was Jerry Savelle. At that time, I turned to my sister and said, that's the boy I will marry one day. We will preach the gospel and go to Africa. After graduation at 17 years old, I married that little boy. The night before our wedding, I told him that the Lord had shown me that the man I married would be a preacher and go to Africa. He said, you're marrying the wrong man. I'm going to spend the rest of my life on a racetrack. He tells the story this way. I said, you just go in there and tell the preacher I do, and me and God will do the rest. On our honeymoon at Six Flags Over Texas, we heard for the first time the song, Dream the Impossible Dream. And that's exactly what we've done together for 57 years and nine months. God gave me a special grace to be married to a man who had a call on his life to travel across the globe. He was gone on an average of 21 days a month, so I got used to being alone, eating alone, sleeping alone, but I always knew he would walk through that kitchen door and come home to me. Typically, I would get a text or phone call and he would say, hi, Squirt, want to meet me at Cracker Barrel? We always look forward to our lunch dates, our times at the River House, and our yearly vacations in Hawaii with our friends. He was the most Christ-like man I've ever known. He was the mirror image of Jesus to me. He was faithful to me. He was loyal to his friends and deeply devoted to his family. Our daughters were the absolute love of his life. Jerry Ann and Terry were daddy's girls. His seven grandchildren and two great-grandchildren brought the greatest joy to his heart. Jerry Savelle was born to be a papa. What attracted me to Jay, that's what I've lovingly called him, were so many wonderful attributes. Everything from his sense of humor, he always had me laughing. He loved children and he loved the elderly. He was such a gentleman. He knew the lyrics to every 50s song and the artist and who wrote them and would even sing them to me. You may be asking yourself, why did this happen to this great man of faith? Most of you know the story of the stroke that he had back in 2016 and the miraculous healing from that. At that time, he was told by the doctor to come back in a year after recovery and have another procedure to another clogged artery. We as a family were on him to have this done. Eventually, he scheduled another surgery in 2020, but that was the week the pandemic happened and everything was shut down. His surgery was canceled. He continued on with his vigorous schedule as travel and ignored his health issues despite the urgings of his girls and I. He never complained or expressed symptoms of any kind, except in the last several months, he seemed extremely fatigued. We just assumed it was intense schedule that he was keeping. But my husband would be here today had he done what the doctor suggested he do. So I urge you to not ignore symptoms in your body or delay medical procedures so that your loved ones will not have to experience this deep pain. I will say that Jerry went out doing what he loved to do the most, and that was pre preaching Jesus, talking people into winning, and giving to others until the very end. There's so much more that I could say and would want to say about this wonderful man but my girls found on his desk a card that I had given him recently, which sums up how I feel about the love of my life. I want to read 
this card to you. You are my heart, my soul, my treasure, my today, my tomorrow, my forever, and my everything. As we grow older together, as we continue to change with age, there is one thing I never change. I always keep falling in love with you. I love you always and forever. Jerry's word from the Lord for 2024. Progressing, advancing, experiencing promotion, and seeing your highest expectations fulfilled. This is truly what happened to him. And I want it to happen for you in this 2024. I want to also thank you for your love, for your support for me, for my family, and for our ministry. We love you and we thank you for everything that you mean to us.